What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today I'm joined with the Marsman crew to review episode one and two of the Halo show season two. And we have had some mixed feelings about this show since day one. And the fact that this season two finally arrives and by God, the, the Rotten Tomato score is actually solid, it seems. But in this video, we're going to be talking about the episode one and two review in the first half. And then the second half, we're going to jump into a spoiler section. So if you didn't watch the episode, you just want to get a, a solid review that won't reveal any major plot points, then stick to the beginning. If you want to see some spoiler discussions, you can obviously jump to the second or you just watch the whole thing. I mean, that that is a, the best way to do it to help us get those hours up. But if you like this type of content, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. So let's jump into our non-spoiler review. And I want to start off by talking about what really a good thing that we saw from this first two episode drop that we saw from the Halo show. And also in mind first, I think the feel of this season so far definitely feels a lot better, a lot more serious, a lot more kind of connected to the Halo games. Because when you compare it to the season one, it felt like it was trying to become a Marvel-esque type of show where it was everything is a joke. Like everything they said was chief joking, saying some witty banter with between Spartans, witty banter between people. And like the whole thing was like, oh, Katana seeing Chief naked in the first season. And it's like Chief's naked, butt naked half the time. And like, it's just a joke. But in this episode, I feel like the writing between characters was a lot better. I felt like the uh, I, I could see the Master Chief saying what he's saying here. I can see the banter between different Spartans and just the story writing of the feel of this entire first two episodes makes sense to the, the atmosphere. And even just the, I guess you say the tense feeling that we all know that the Covenant is on reach, but the question is, will anyone else see that happen? Right? And I feel like that that was kind of the premise of the, all the trailers was that reach, the fall of reach is happening, right? That's that we all know that's going to happen at some point because based off the trailers itself, but it's almost like this tense feeling that like we don't know when it's going to happen in, in this entire time it's building up for that. And I feel like that feeling you get from the first two episodes does follow in that Halo style of writing where it's it's dark, it can be gritty, and there's a lot of combat points, there's a lot of dark things that can happen. And you know, you saw that in the first episode extremely well. Um, second one definitely had some things you can improve on for when it comes to that feeling but first two episodes they definitely make it feel like a completely different show based on just the writing alone and how the atmosphere is but Aki what was something that you felt was a good in these first two episodes I definitely have to agree with you the um, writing just in general definitely got better uh, but I wanted to shine light on the CGI I thought just in general um, whether it be, you know, and this is no spoilers, but whether it be elites or, um, you know, the, the actual gun uh, movements from, from where Chief and, and other Marines are, are doing as well, I think they really nailed it down. They did do, a, uh, you know, a very good job in the first, uh, you know, season with that, but I think they improved on this and there's a lot more kind of face-to-face -face action with uh, at least some elites in in these episodes so i think cgi is good but yeah like you said there's there's some things that are just super cringe we're going to get into it a little later but um, i think so far pretty good angelica what was something you felt was good when you watched these first two episodes yeah, when I look at the first episode, you know, kind of picking back on what you guys, CGI definitely felt improved. Uh, the elites look a little bit more natural. The fight sequences actually look pretty good. And, and kind of picking back, the banter between Spartans um, and even some of the Spartans and Marines felt more real, felt more Halo-like. So, um, and another thing, guys, we talked about this last when we reviewed season one, the Covenant felt like more of a threat. Um, this is something that was a big problem last season where they just... They were kind of like an afterthought, right? They were thrown in there. They did some big things, but they just felt weak and not important um, and not strong. And in the first two episodes, you're really starting to see uh, the strength of the Covenant and bringing that uneasiness into this war. Um, so that that to me was a definitely um, a, a big one. And boy, continuing from season one, guys, when the Spartans wear their equipment, they look damn good. I mean, they look really good. This whole thought process that you can't connect with the audience when you're wearing it you know and that you'll see in the first two episodes that that doesn't feel that way I, I think they you can really connect includes the banter it includes kind of the body language and when they're in gear they look good yeah and i i feel like what they did a good job was they made kind of building off of like the covenant being strong it also made the spartans feel like human like they felt not like dumb emotion like we're talking like 
they, their bodies can break down and and, yes. and that's something that you know a lot of people don't realize is that yeah the spartans have like that, that dominant armor and their abilities top notch but they're also human so they kind of feel the brunt of that and i feel like yep. that was a big theme that we saw with the first two episodes and it, it worked well and it actually mirrors what the story and the lore of halo is about too and i feel like that's something that i can i can ride with i can i can roll with that idea but with the good we do need to talk about the bad and and there are definitely some bad things i did see in these first two episodes mainly the second episode there was some really like fringe stuff that was going on and i think it really has a lot to do with um there are some good characters that we are introduced to but then there are some continuations of some bad story plots that will never for some reason they just don't learn they just don't understand that there are story characters that you're adding that are hated and they are continuing them. and i'm not going to ruin it i don't want to throw some but we all know that quan is still part of the storyline so that's not going to spoil anything for anybody but anytime quan's story arc jumps into the fray i honestly i honestly lose brain cells i i honestly think that they need to take internal polling even external po uh, polling and ask people do you like quan as a character and do you like quan's arc and I can guarantee you, probably even the writers of the show, or even Halo fans in 3 for 3 and other people, will say they don't like Quan's story because it's boring. It slows everything down. When you have really good story writing between Ackerson and Chief, which is like a good tense rivalry, and even Ackerson and Halsey, good writing between characters, then you just get Quan to just slow it all down, to, to, to diminish anything that you're gaining and that's what i feel like there's a big problem the pacing can seem very on and off it can be very good pacing of story plots and then you just throw in a quan scene and you say well we want to slow down the writing let's throw in quan or let's throw in another character that no one likes it's just you need to be consistent i feel like in the very beginning of season of the episode one you had that soren and chi storyline two storylines two characters we you know chief is iffy because he's you know published writer and everything but his writing's better in this one so, so far, so good. The Chief's writing's a little bit better. Soren is a good character. Let's keep those two storylines going. Less Quan, but let's just keep those two storylines as our main priorities. But it felt like this just, they just kept slowing themselves down. Like it was just ruining themselves as they're progressing. So that was kind of something I was annoyed by. I like the way that some of these story plots are going, but some storylines, they need to just let it die. Let it move on. Focus on something else. Uh, Langelica, what was something bad that you thought? Yeah, um, you know, we'll get into the grades on the two episodes. I thought episode two was definitely a significant step down um, from the first one. And a big part of it is in this show, and they talked about it before. So if you followed the trailers and, and some of the talk before the season, um, they talked about this being a reboot. And they nuked some of the storyline plots from season one, which I'm OK with because they were absolute trash. But they also doubled down on some other ones that make me want to puke. So this is where things get a little bit nervous for me and why it's a bit mixed um, on them kind of, it is a reboot, but there are some things that I'm sure when the fans watch it, they're going to be like, whoa, what's going on? Um, that and listen, I know the silver timeline and I know the Spartans are taking off their gear and, and Pablo's doing his thing, but there's just some, I think the ceiling is capped on this show as a Halo show with the more Master Chief kinds of, wants to be the john and they keep referring to the man john 117 and, and i do think that does a cap on the season even though it's better writing like you mentioned i agree with that but there is still some god cringe moments um that we still get i think he asking well what about john like we we yeah. know about john like we john was prevalent the entire time in this in this first season we know who john is it's about the master chief that's who we don't know we don't yeah. know who that is right I, and i feel like we don't have enough like, of him. We, yeah, there's like not that's, enough that's of kind him of something care that about the John part. It's just, it's just confusing to me. And we're going to jump into a lot more in the spoiler section. But, Aki, what is something that you felt was bad about these first two episodes? Yeah, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but you guys pretty much uh, said exactly what I was going to say. It, it really is when, you know, Quan comes into the story. And, and I, you know, I don't want to say, you know, she's a bad actress she's probably not a bad actress but i think it's the writing and just her storyline that was really tainted from the first season so again like you said they're kind of doubling down on a few things that we don't want them to do um but you have that you have a a, a few of the uh, um interactions 
with, and I don't know if this is spoiling stuff, but a different Spartan team, um, Silver Team and a different Spartan team, some of the banter between them I thought was kind of cringy or kind of like silly, the things that they said. Uh, yeah, um, like they called each other, field. Yeah, they, they called each other like names, but it, was, it wasn't like, you know, correctly written or it didn't really sound like offensive like it should have been, you know, but uh, so just small things like that. But in general, you know, um, it's it's off to a good start, at least with the first episode. But the second episode definitely slowed down for me. Um, it, it I kind of feel like a, a little bit of wasted time had happened in the second episode. So we'll kind of have to jump into you know the nitty gritty here. But uh, that's yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, the Cobalt team they has the they have the worst insults I think I've ever seen from like a banter I've ever heard. <laughs> like a, and it, uh, it was, middle school it was like school a middle school schoolyard. It's like, like an elementary get school beat up in the like. Bathroom. <laughs> elementary, elementary school like slander they're throwing at people yeah. and and they're like well, they're like hey I don't like your hair like what'd you say bitch like that was like <laughs> yeah. it was like what what <laughs> what just happened <laughs> so so with that, that being said let's let's jump into our our you know our grades for these first two episodes and when I'm looking at the overarching two episodes episode one was way better I mean you have to you have to be real they definitely started out with a very strong first episode that set the stage of how we were looking at this show and, and I think it kind of ma matches best. A lot of people are saying this. The expectations of this uh, season were at ground level. They were at, like basement level, if we can even get lower, you get at the Earth's core. And so first episode got us to say, huh, that actually wasn't bad, right? That yeah. wasn't a bad episode. And they, they, they said, all right, well, we're going to nuke a lot of the dumb things that we did in the first season. And we're going to try to now bring it in with some new characters, some better writing, some interesting battle scenes. Like the battle scene they had in the beginning was probably one of the best ones I've seen uh, throughout the whole show so far. And they showed you the strength of the Covenant. And and then they said, all right, well, we got your hopes up. Let's now nuke them a little bit. Let's tamper expectations with that with episode two. And I felt like if I was looking at the two episodes, first episode was probably like just like we saw with first season. First episode, first season wasn't bad either. It was probably hitting around an, like an eight and a half for me in the first episode for this one. And then the second episode got me to like a six or a five and a half. And now, uh, so when I balance that stuff out, I'm going to give it a seven. I think the first two episodes together combined, I'm averaging to a seven. First episode started out really strong. Second one kind of just got me pissed off. And, and now I'm like, well, I really don't know what's going to happen with the story for next episode and how they're going to continue. So these story plots are going to go with. So that's why seven is a is not a bad grade for Halo show. Well, it's yeah, like for our it's, shows where one through ten and yeah. five is average, right? Yeah, like so it's um, better it's different I, than our video game grade. And I think like a seven is a solid grade for a TV show, and I think it's really because it carried by the first episode. But the second one, second one was like there are some really bad moments, but I think a five and a half for the second one, and an eight and a half for the first one, and then it gets to a seven for me. So. I'm going to go with a seven. But Hockey, what was your grade for this? Uh, first one, um, an, an 8.5 from you. That's that's pretty high. Uh, my first episode, I'm going to be hard on these shows. Um, ever since The Last of Us was good and the Halo season one was bad, I got it at a 7.1. So it, it is in the, you know, it is in the pretty good range, uh, just over that seven. I said CGI was good. That's pretty much what saved it was, was some of the action. Uh, very, very good action. Uh, but a lot of bad stuff, you know. Um, Chief having his helmet off again, a whole lot, uh, and it continued in episode two. I'm gonna have to accept it, my man. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm gonna have to swallow. Probably, it. I, I know. I accept it. That's why I didn't lower the grade. <laughs> Listen, forward. it's um, it's a drama. It's not an action show. Yeah, that's yeah. That, that's what I'm thinking, you know. So, uh, but yeah, episode two definitely a little bit worse. I have it at a six point five. So, you know, a, a fairly significant jump between one and two. Uh, but give me more action. More action is is definitely good. Yeah, and uh, Angelica, what was your grade for the first two episodes? Yeah, so on our TV shows and, and rubric um, metrics where five is average, I had my first episode at a seven out of ten, so I thought it was a pretty solid one. The action, the CGI, the banter, um, and getting to see the Spartans in full gear, right? That's that's what we that's what to me is when this show is when they're focused in is when you get the best of it. My second one is the significant drop. I'm at a five. Um, with that so i'm just giving it the base average because i liked some concepts we'll get in spoiler about the second episode but boy there was some ugliness in there and that's why it gets the bare minimum five out of me so i'm at a six out of ten for the two episodes combined all right well that's gonna be it for a non-spoiler review 
But in the next half of the video, we're going to jump into our spoiler discussion. So stick around if you want to hear some spoilers. But if not, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Let's jump now to the spoiler section. So we are now in the spoiler section of the video. And I want to really just talk about some major plot scenes that happen and kind of get our reactions to some things. And I'm going to start with episode one. And when I'm looking at the beginning of this episode, it was probably the best part of the entire episode as a whole because it did a lot of things. And I feel like that's really where you want to see them start off on a big note. And a lot of it has to do with they're on the planet Sanctuary, which is basically like an outer colony outside of Reach that was home to a lot of like civilians that, and this is actually a really good point. It actually brings in a little bit of the lore as well as some like historical symbolism behind it. So there were a lot of citizens that were migrated multiple times because they were fearful of losing control of these outer colonies and they constantly had to move places. So this like shaman woman and a bunch of like random like people just living in the colony themselves were angry that the UNSC was there trying to relocate them again. And she says, well, you know, this is this land is now sacred to us. We were already lost our sacred home already. You're now we're moving us again. This is our home. We're going to stay here no matter what. So you can't force us out. Um, it kind of connect makes a lot of connections to like American history with like Native American tribes being forcibly removed. So like it gives that symbolism. And obviously, like now you have the, con the you know, the, the connection between Chief and the Silver Team. Like Chief is kind of being like more to the point, like we wanted him to be since day one. And he's going out there to try to sell this issue. And you know, what they heard was that there were some Marines that were outside of the, you know, out of radar and they couldn't get in contact with him. So she's like, I'll go take care of this. And at this point, this is where the best part happens, where he's battling a bunch of elites because a yeah. lot of Marines were getting attacked. And this is actually uh, mirroring a lot of what the Reach story was in the, from the video game, where like a lot of times they started to, they had to go investigate outer colonies either on reach or abroad saying that hey we're losing contact with a lot of colonies and we don't know why and we have to go investigate it so this was similar to that concept um and what they did was these marines got attacked and the elites were were badass they're all cloaked so chief is fighting a bunch of them you saw the the assault rifle you saw the shotgun these are classic weapons you all know and, and love um still wish the shotguns at halo infinite but it's not um, but you know, he's battling against everybody and there's only one Marine that lives and that's, that's a uh, private Perez. And that was that new character that they said they, they brought in. She was a, I thought she was going to be like us and she's probably going to be a lot more in the show as well. But I thought he was going to be like a super, like in every scene she was going to be, in. but they did a good job with the way she, she's kind of connected in a way that she is like that, that ordinary person that like is getting that PTSD about this incident. And then all of a sudden when, when you knew, like even, even like chief or master cheeks himself turned around and saw that there was the zealot elites showed up which are like the higher level ones and they're all got their blades out and he's just like i'm probably gonna get killed here and they all just leave right and we don't know why they just left but you know they said well it's because they got what they wanted and they just wanted to leave get out of there all of a sudden they're glassing the planet and i think that's probably the most powerful scene is that the fact that you see how strong the covenant is and they're wiping everybody out um, one scene that I was a little frustrated with was when the shaman was going to go basically die. She basically says to John and grabs his arm and says, uh, find your friend, your death comes soon. And I was just kind of like, find your faith. Yeah. Find I've your faith. Your and I was like, I, I see your, I've seen your death. And I'm like, dude, don't, <laughs> don't do this. Like I, I've seen enough movies that when you say that, it's like, he needs to become holy, like, holy Lord, and find his, find his religion. <laughs> And then he'll be found and all that. Hey, but the fight scene now there was actually they didn't look like box cars, the elite. So let's yeah. go, let's yeah, get some photos yeah, here. Yeah, I mean they they, they, they look definitely smooth. The fighting, fist fighting, gunfight, everything. The elites. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just kind of want to get your feeling about this intro because I felt like they did a good job with with the Spartans. They did a good job with the the issue that is constantly faced with UNSC and these outer colony residents, and they showed how strong the Covenant was. Now we only saw elites, we didn't see any other aliens, but. They, they definitely kind of showed the strength that they have, right? I think that was kind of the big thing. So just want to get your feeling about this because I feel like that was kind of a big thing that I liked was the first intro scene. How about the Halo music right after that yeah. scene in the intro? It actually sounded like Halo. Right. That, was a, a that, that was from the Halo 2. Um, it was like the last part and it was like the scene where he's bringing the bomb back to the Covenant ship. That's basically the song. It just revamped or remixed version of it. And yeah, so I thought that was like damn imagine that you yeah. add a song from the games and now all, everybody unanimously is like damn this is the best intro i've seen like in a while like, yeah. it, it's all i've it's, it's all you needed like it's just 
put some more music in. That's why I always thought to myself, why don't you have more of that type of music in the show itself? Because you own it, right? Like that's kind of the idea. But Hockey, what did you feel about this intro? Yeah, so, and uh, Angelica had uh, mentioned this a little bit, but it was a little more serious. It was definitely a little more scary. There was a jump scare. Uh, you know, one of the first Marines got taken right out of the smoke. I thought that was awesome. Uh, but yeah, it was it was pretty serious. The elites were pretty badass, and it shows how crazy of a soldier that Master Chief is. He's able to just handle, like, I don't know how many. There was probably eight or nine elites that he actually just murdered. He had a sick move with the shotgun and everything. I thought that was awesome. Uh, but yeah, fighting, everything looks good. Uh, music was good when they're when they are you know portraying what a halo game is they do yeah. a very good job at it so they just need to continue yeah. doing that uh and but, get it you can't fight all the time but yeah, even the totally. banter before they fought between the okay. spartans felt yeah. like something you could see in the game the one-liners the, the quick joke but they're not so cringe and corny yeah, exactly. that we've seen previously it was actually felt genuine and it just hurts that idea that you can't connect with the audience unless your equipment is off. And so that's the thing that just felt like, you know, this is a great example to learn on give us more of this and less of, not saying you can't because you have to, that's how the, you know, you're gonna be in the barracks, you're gonna be doing others, but a little bit less of the stupid drama yeah, stuff. Yeah, like the less eye rolling and all this yes. other stuff, like, you know, give and me that, that give me emotional gun, you know. stuff, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, that was kind of the thing that I saw, too, uh, the fact that they showed emotion without having to take off their helmet and, and say, hey, what emotion you give me right now, uh, Varric? Uh, look at him, like, Vanek, what, which, hel- which emotion are you give me? Like, he's just, he just has to say a word, like, you know, like, hey, did you, did, you, did, you take off your, yeah, like, did you take off your uh, emotional chip? Well. He's like, yeah. And the girl looking not. back, and the girl looking back, and, like, that's the, that's the joke connection right there, right? Like, he didn't have to have his helmet off to express like that was a joke yeah you know like what i'm the, saying yeah it was just basic stuff like that but let's move on though i i feel like i really want to talk about the new character Akerson. and i feel like that he was a new introduction to this to the show and he's actually from the lore of the games as well and i feel like he is a pivotal character um to this entire you know storyline especially this earlier plot and Akerson basically was the is an oni agent even though i can't stand that he has to keep saying it o and i to say Oni, like it's just literally what everyone calls it throughout the entire every game ever. Just call it Oni. He says, Oh, ONI doesn't think just say Oni, bro. It's, it's not hard. But he's an Oni agent and he basically is now becoming the new director of the Spartan program. So he's basically replaced Halsey. And he does a, he, I think the guy did a good job at basically saying, like, he, he was very conniving and he came, came off as like, Oh, yeah, I can never replace Halsey. You know, he's, she's just too too amazing but at the same time he's also kind of like condescending toward her because he doesn't like Halsey he is like a rival to Halsey and he's basically like trying he's playing both sides trying to get people on his side emotionally but at the same time he's and I think the line that you know he says he's the boss like he's he's the guy who's making decisions and I feel like that tension that is being built between Akerson and Chief is actually a pretty good like balancing act and I feel like he was for a guy that you know in reality like chief could break him in half like you know like when chief did his emotional superman punch to halsey clearly he didn't care that she was the boss right Ackerson, he could have done that accident any moment if he wanted to but Ackerson kind of gave off that like i can literally do one thing and just keep you all grounded if i want to and you can't do anything about it and chief realizes that he doesn't have the power in that situation um and so like and, and what I'll, I'll say one thing is <laughs> i think well, one of the one of the best parts about this, uh, this I think it was it, it have, maybe I'm jumping the gun and going to the next episode, but the the whole banter between characters of like Col- uh, uh, Cobalt and Silver Team, I, I want to jump into that first because I like Akerson is one thing, but then they added new characters from Cobalt, right? Now, the, I, as a lore freak myself, I I do not like this interaction between these Spartan twos like this, because in reality, they all were the, growing up in the same place. Are they Spartan twos? They're all, these are all, that's the thing. These are all Spartan twos. Oh, okay. These, that's why, this is where I get annoyed. These are all Spartan twos. So they're all growing up together. They're all basically family. And yeah, you can have some shade at somebody and be like, yeah, but like Riz showed up like, what'd you say, bitch? 
Like you're like, yeah, like you're like, all right, all right, Riz, chill out, like relax. Like it was kind of just like, damn, that escalated real quickly to, to the point where like I thought to myself, hey, if these were Spartan threes and they're basically talking trash to the Spartan twos or something, then like I would be like, all right, I don't mind that interaction, but they aren't. That's why, and I said this in my in my video about my predictions. You needed to introduce Spartan threes since day one. That needed to be the first thing you did was they need to have Ackerson has his Spartan threes who he creates in the games, who basically are the majority of Spartans on reach at this point, and they have to have that bit of rivalry between the Spartan 3s and the Spartan 2s. Spartan 2s are created by Halsey, and Spartan 3s are created by Ackerson, so they have a natural rivalry against each other because they're two separate types of Spartans. Okay, And if you, may, if you replace Cobalt Team with Spartan 3s, I could completely understand this like internal rivalry between two. Spartan 2s, it makes no sense because they're literally all the same thing. Yeah, it's just, and the, the, the big rivalry was during training when they before augmentation. Yeah, so like uh, now I don't understand it. it. It's just it's just like a forced, a, a forced like conflict yeah. of some sort. And, um, yeah, keep going, man. I don't want to. Talk. Yeah, no, and I that was one of the worst parts of, and not even because I like getting introduced to more Spartans. It's just that number one, it was such a like we talked about in the previous segment, like an elementary or middle school playground banter um, for didn't feel needed. Um, mm. I, I like getting new. They got sent on a new mission. And just to, before we keep continuing, how about them nuking the two plot lines of Matrigal who got glassed, right? Mm. We don't talk about all season one about Matrigal, Matrigal, whatever the hell it's called. Ma Magical. Gets, Magical. Gets glassed. Right out of the gate. And the second thing, Cortana being removed from John out of his head um, and no longer. And you saw it in the first scene. We're wondering, well, where's Cortana? We haven't heard her. She gets removed from him. So a lot of things kind of turning. Um, and then we get the introduction to new Spartans. But boy, oh, that was stupid. Not a great introduction. <laughs> no, yeah. So, Aki, what did you feel about these new Spartans? Did you like Cobalt Team? Did you like Ackerson? Uh, no, I, I just didn't like them because they came. I liked Ackerson. I'm hot. sorry. Sorry, Aki. I didn't mention. I did like Ackerson, although volume up to 10 on the on the bad guy scale. Loosen it oh, a little yeah. bit. But let's ease yeah. into the bad guy thing. <laughs> yeah, Ackerson was pretty cool. It was almost like, uh, you know, John goes to therapy. It was, uh, <laughs> you know, he was kind of tricking him with his words a little bit. And, it almost made Master Chief, you know, at one point sit down like a little toddler and, and listen to what daddy has to say, you know. But, um, yeah, the Cobalt team, I mean, yeah, they came in way too hot for me, uh, talking hella shit. And it seemed like they knew that all of them had taken out their chips as well. I, I think there was some mention to that. So yeah. it seems like so, at so least the Spartan 2s know that dude, they took their chips out. Yeah, just, you know? just, just like remembering some of the things that happens, like... They're like, oh, so when you took out the chip, did you feel anything different? Like, no, not at all. So, like, you're emotion more emotional than you were before? No, it's the same thing. Yeah, but like, even the, even the you're more yeah, but even but even the Spartan twos, they're all making jokes. They're all emotional. Yeah. Like, so, like that, the whole point is, is that just like you said, I'll let kill. They, they're nuking a lot of these dumb things. Now, granted, chip thing was actually part of the story anyway. Now they eventually do take out all the chips. Like all the Spartans do do that because they want to get they want to take away like that concept that they have to be helped with emotions and feelings or whatever that but like these Spartan 2s are feel like they've already taken out the chip like, they already make jokes they already do talking trash like that you know that's like it feels like they don't even have that but just to kind of finish off with this this episode i feel like we have to talk about keep going to therapy and <laughs> I feel like I need to go to therapy, therapy after this. And this is a very interesting type of therapy. This is similar to what I've seen in Cyberpunk, where you want to go to, like, it's like a prostitute slash AI prostitute, and you can either go talk to that person or you do whatever you want with the AI, whatever you want to do. But damn, like, so you put a card in, and it matches the whatever you want, and then, like, you can customize them. And then, you know, it was just, like, kind of like the weirdest thing. It was kind of like the mirroring of, I think that a lot of people made this connection. The newer Blade Runner movie where like the AI computer points to the guy and says, you're alone. You're lonely. I can help you. Look you, lonely. I yeah, can you look lonely. I can fix that. <laughs> That's literally the equivalent of what that scene was for me, where it was just like the Master Chief was like the Blade Runner character. And they're like, you're alone. I can help you with that. 
And I was just like, dude, why does he need to go see a, a, a AI yeah, it's therapist? Returning customer. It's so yeah, yeah, like he's been coming, he's been showing up every <laughs> every day at like five o'clock. And, like, <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like, dude, you could have easily had done so many other things to make him feel like, hey, I, I actually really do need Cortana like to help me with whatever I'm having issues with. Versus, because like, this is the best part. It had nothing to do with Maki. Like Maki wasn't the thing that he was missing. He was why missing. No, but that's the point. It was because why would he need to have a lady look like Cortana? That's to, what it was, Gary. Because I was a little yeah. confused. No, like, it was is Cortana. He Cortana, or is he talking about? No, him? he's talking about Cortana. Okay. He's saying that though because he's like, "There's a piece of me missing," and it's like I, you would be the one that would fill that piece. And he's saying that Cortana is not there, talking to him in his brain. So he's like, "She's gone. I only have that extra." And, Don't and, you now, find listen, I am a, listen. I am a completely understandable because in the in the lore of the game. They said that Chief had struggled mentally with with the all the argumentation, right? They that he struggled, and that Cortana was the missing piece that Halsey said this will help him, this will solve that problem, he will become the best soldier. That is okay, but nowhere in the books, in TV shows, games did I ever play as the Master Chief. Like, all right, mission five, go to therapy, and I have to go walk to a therapist and go talk about my feelings to the. I never once had to do that. thirsty. Yeah, like, it's just like, dude, yeah. like, you don't thirsty need to therapist. write this. Yeah. You don't need to write that. I feel like that's just such a stupid thing that they added in. Just to, like, give him that, oh, chief struggling, man. Like, damn, that's tough. Like, you, you could have done a thousand different things to still do that basic concept. And I feel like that's just something so dumb, right? So dumb. And I don't know. You guys can get, get talk about it before. I, I want to, like, the last, one's one last thing before episode one, before I... Take a dump on episode two, but anything if you want to say uh, for the last part. I think you you kind of nailed it. Um, I couldn't tell initially. I thought it was about Cortana, but I was like, is he thinking about Maki because he's thirsty? But um, you know, the Cortana thing makes sense. It's just uh, it was strange. It, it's one of those moments again that you just I can't see Master Chief doing this. Never. It's strange to me. Never. And that's not to say that, you know, therapy is a bad thing for people. It's just something I just, like, it's not earned. That wasn't therapy. This, this, mental, <laughs> this mental loneliness is just not earned. It's too quick. It's like they're grabbing components from Halo 4, 5, maybe Infinite, and they're trying to cobble it together. Um, but they're like, they're not earning that. Yeah, they. I, I feel like this has just kind of been, they're just rushing a lot of these things. And, and Hockey, anything before you want to say if before I jump to the next thing? I was just thrown out there and it was so funny, you know, after his time was up, it was like, you need to add more money. He, like ripped the card away, like embarrassed and like, you know, like <laughs> disgusted in himself, you know, like, it's like, well, no, yeah, I'll be back it, tomorrow. It to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll come back tomorrow. Don't worry. Just like, yeah. dude, this is some big, big ass seven foot brolic dude. And like, no one, no one looks the other. It was like, oh yeah, it's just a normal thing. This guy going in the elevator this is normal. Um, I, and I just want to briefly the Soren, the Soren story. Like, I, I don't mind the first episode with Soren being arrested by Oni, but then at the final episode to get us excited for episode two was we saw Quan. Like, that's not that doesn't get me excited. Doesn't that gets me annoyed, right? That gets me really thr like throw up in my mouth a little bit. But, but let's talk about episode two. This is where really things started to go downhill. But the beginning of the episode actually was pretty solid. I think they did the Halsey moment, which was very weird because she was, she clearly was a prisoner. She was trying to get out and she kept asking the lady like, all right, can you tell me what's going on? And she just dies. And you're like, oh, okay, and I was like, that's messed up. Then it cuts away. Then it shows you that like Riz is still struggling. Like she, they're, they're basically like, you know, they're, they're training, they're trying to like train themselves to be prepared. She's, she's, is still injured and she is still struggling to get back. and. She's getting trained by a former Spartan that was a Spartan too, just like them. But this is actually a good part because it actually explains that, you know, part of the story was that after the augmentation happens, a lot of people are disfigured or have issues and they can't become Spartans. Like that's what happened with Soren. Soren basically, his arm was like melded with the armor and he literally couldn't become a Spartan. That's why he left because he's like, what am I gonna be an office job? Like I need, I, I can't do that. And the same thing happened with the trainer is that he basically turned blind and he basically says, I'm here just to help you guys out. But I just remember like how, you know, how awesome everyone looked when I first, when I could see. And I think they, they dropped a good line and this is a good callback was that Spartans never die. 
Yeah. Um, that was a good line that because was that was that was like literally prime Halo line yeah. that yeah, they always use that. So um, I think that was a good line to use. And I really think the beginning. So I thought the beginning was strong, but after that is really where things really went downhill. But any any thoughts on the on the opening for you guys? Yeah, no, I love that. That's the one thing that saved this episode for me is the background to Spartans. And, and you mentioned that, you know, you, you can't show weakness. Um, you know, you can't show that you can't be one of the Spartans and, and that, that it is taxing on the body, even though they're augmented, even though they're like super soldiers. Um, you could see that things like they can wear down. Uh, um, and that, that to me was probably the best part of it. Um, then we get into the, you know, the the idea that Master Chief can't be trusted and the Spartan team is not being trusted and they think there's a mental issue um, with Master Chief. Um, and that's kind of what Ackerson and the, the conflict with him is having. And that's why they're grounded is because they think he's seeing things like the Covenant could have killed them, but they didn't. And why is that like from from episode one? So that part was somewhat interesting even though the way they got to it again, and I think you're going to dive into it, is with Perez. And that's the part where, to me, it takes a little bit of a step down. I don't really understand. And I'll just say, you know, what's your KDA, guys? I mean, KDA. Uh, I was I was going to say the same thing. I think that was a good that was a good line. <laughs> I was actually going to say, you're KD nice. And I was like, yes. that was actually, I was actually like, maybe laugh a little. Cause I was like, that was actually a good line to say. That was your KDR. Like I don't keep count. And I was just like, I was like, that's a pretty good line. Yeah. I like that. The KD the nice. KD nice. Is your KD nice? I thought it was pretty yeah. funny. Uh, but hockey, did you like that? That begin? Do you like the beginning of this portion, like, especially with that like, the whole like the effects of the augmentation on Spartans and, and how that kind of changes really the the battle between Ackerson and whether or not John is stable? Do you like that concept, or you if you? Yeah, no, I, I did like it. It kind of shows you that, you know, yes, they are Spartans, but they are still vulnerable. You know, they are still like human it, to, to some ex uh, to some extent. Um, but yeah, I mean, the training was was pretty cool. You got to see I forgot what her name is, but jumping from cliff to cliff and, and they're they're firing live rounds at her and everything, which was pretty cool. Um, that opening scene was good. But the Quan scene, like the chase scene, in, in, in oh of the my god! I, I like I, I not at the beginning. I'm trying to pull I, it out. I of my respect. Brain. Yeah, I right? respect. Re that was re in the that from my brain. Yeah. I know it was. It, it was, was the like first scene. It was minutes. like the first scene you saw. Yeah. And it, it was, was kind of like it was. Minutes. It makes no sense to me because she basically just like stabs. She st first off, she steals food. And then like, well, I gotta kill you now. Well, yeah. Soren got taken, like you mentioned. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. He was arrested. The other pirate lords took over his crew and thus i guess take ownership of her that's my assumption i don't know they take over weird. the crew and that's what they were trying to and grab. then she stabs him with the with the earpiece yeah. that she had and like damn yeah. that that i will tell you that is one strong swing to yeah. stab someone he, with an earpiece that is earpiece. that's really so much yeah she and, killed hero, dude. <laughs> killed now, this i want to make a call back because i remember there was some there were some people that were really that were the hopium was high and they're, they're trying to be lore fanatics when, when they said that all right, there's new AI. There's a new AI. It's it's Cortana's yes. cousin, thank you, or Cortana's sister. Sister, and, yeah. And yeah. all we do know is that guess what, guys? They changed the actress to Cortana. Like we all said, like we all on the channel has said, they did this, and it's clear as day. But everyone's like, no, you're just butt hurt. It's just yeah. you're just they, they, they just there's no one tell this guy. That there's more than one AI in the universe at this time. <laughs> like guys, I, I've been I've been the gamer of Halo since day one. I've looked into the lore. I've looked into the universe of Halo. I know there's more AI, but this is simple. This is a fact of life. You need to get over it. They changed the actors because they probably wanted to change actresses because the person either wanted more money or they hired a lady. It's not that complicated. But that's and you not think the problem. This show that's not following lore, like barely follows lore. Is going to be like actually there is more AI. No, let's, they, they, let's it's go. A Katana's very simple. sister. Like, yeah. well, what are you? What are we talking about? Like yeah. Katana's sister. Simple fact is that Ackerson. This is that wasn't even a bad line. Like Ackerson has Katana, right? And he's using her to try to break Halsey, right? Because he hates Halsey. So like, that's fine. Like that's not a bad part. But what made me die laughing was Halo Show had done a better job at making Chief go AWOL than anything that Halo 5 ever even <laughs> contemplated. Like that was the funniest thing to me because 
in this in the the whole this the plot line cobalt goes missing they're all on standby there's no help going for cobalt they're going to the visigrad relay which is a callback to halo reach because in halo reach the game the visigrad re relay goes offline and they have to go figure out why is it going offline that's where the game begins so i can guarantee you the elites are there and that's where like a lot of the crap starts to happen so chief says i'm going on a mission with my squad to go find out what happened with cobalt at the visigrad relay and he they like yeah and even you know venick was like hey uh you know what his kai was like hey so uh, what's the what's the details you know like yeah yeah um we're just gonna go they, they said fine uh yeah. we're, we're all like, good like, we he doesn't even okay tell them the story and yeah he like, he's like nah, yeah yeah okay. <laughs> yeah <laughs> roger that and and he, and he goes like so this is a, a clear like mutiny against what Ackerson said not anything what halo 5 did was a mutiny. Yes. so like it was just it made me laugh because like, when he did that i was like this is more of an actual like a wall than what yes. anything Halo Five did. So that is true. kudos to you guys. You fight. You pulled off the one thing that an entire game of Halo. Okay. Now pull off. after that, kudos. Now grab the last part of the show and pull and, that kudos and, back. And then just kudos <laughs> back and just shove it up my ass <laughs> because because I will say one thing: the Visigrad relay, or so this is the sorry, I'm wrong. This is the Halo Reach sword base. This is actually another callback to the game. Sword base was where the Covenant also attacked. And there's a very good scene. It starts off really good, where it's like the Darth Vader scene from Rogue One, and all this. So, and this, I gotta say that the, the tactics these Marines did were completely <laughs> idiotic. Let's just awesome. send four four it Marines out. Like. It was Star Wars like. It was Star Wars like. Send four Marines out. They get clapped. <laughs> right. Send five more. Get clapped. And then there's one guy left. Like, are they good? And then he just steps up, destroys him. And then like the elite actually had lines like uh, that. This this is a, such an unhonorable like way to like to kill people and then who arrives maki like she's jesus and rose back from the dead shows up and she's like all right let me just walk in and open like open this door for me and then opens the door and i'm just like i just don't i don't understand there's a few possible realms of possibility that this are okay i don't think she returned from the shadow realm only she got this the the dragon, the dragon balls ball. and and returned yeah. back from, from the dead <laughs> I don't think that that's the case. I don't think she got Genie's Aladdin's wishes and re re revived them or anything. I think one of it was a few options. Either one, she's a clone, right? There's a clone. They they, re they cloned her because the Covenant needs humans to help it, 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 turn on the the stupid plot that they created that only certain humans can turn on this thing. Not all humans, only certain humans can, right? That they have to use that stupid like the idiot idiotic plot line that they created. Two, it's an AI that they basically took her cells and made an AI out of her, which I would be less likely. Um, but she, there's no way that she's alive because she, like, she got capped in the chest, eyes wide open, heart stopped, and there's no, and even like Kai was like, Chief, I shot her in the chest. Like, and he's like, Yes, I know. Like, so we all confirm that she's dead. We all confirm. That. So this has to be a clone, an AI, but it cannot, if it, if it is Maki in the last season, I don't understand. Then we're pulling off some like last Jedi, like type of yeah. mentality, thought processing oh, yeah. of how That's this works. Right. Like magic will just bring her back to life or something like stupid like that. I, I really don't understand. And that's really what drove this entire episode to the ground for me because I thought the last, F with like Chief going AWOL and Sword Base and a lot of callbacks. Like there were some solid moments. And then they just like there are some dumb funny moments like with the KD nice and and like the fact that Riz can't climb up a mountain even though she has a, a grapple shot in her freaking wrist. Like she's gotta manually climb up and you can literally just rant just fly it's up gone. a mountain. <laughs> like like you know, it's just like dumb things like that, but like but that ruined it. Like that just said, screw you. We don't care about what you like or don't like. But I want to get your guys' opinions before we uh, close out everything. But Angelica, what do you feel about this return of Maki? The, the last Maki is back. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how they explain this. I, I really don't know how they explain it. And I don't understand, like Mars, you said, and we said it in the pre previous segment, they're willing to nuke some of the dumb plot lines that we couldn't stand, but yet double down on this stupid one one of the stupidest ones from season one we are doubling down on 
And I think it's what you're saying is that only the humans can open the portal to the Halo ring. And I can't believe they did not nuke this. And I don't know how they're going to explain Maki come back. I don't think she's AI. This is either a clone or somehow, some way, they saved her life from season one. So I don't know how they're going to explain it, but I was okay with this episode until that moment. And to me, I think if it is her coming back to life as a revisionist, coming back to this episode, this episode's worse. If she's back to life and they explain that she's back to life. If she's a clone, I still think this is a five, but like it's a little bit better, but I don't understand how they're doing this. I, I that's where it's gonna scare me. Hockey, what do you what do you feel about this last this closing of this episode? Yeah, I think they're just full Star Wars in it. So she's a clone like Snoke and uh, you know, she came back to life. She never actually died. She just princess Princess Leia did it. And flew back. Well, which street. one? You can't do both. Oh yeah, uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> oh man, maybe, maybe you can. No, yeah, I'm gonna say that somehow she's... alive. Like, that's, yeah. that's a, it's alive. that famous meme. Palpatine <laughs> yeah. somehow alive. Yeah. It's Maki <laughs> somehow alive. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm gonna say she's a clone. But, yeah, I mean they're they're just pulling stuff out of thin air now. So I mean it's it's gonna be very it's gonna be very interesting to see where they go. Uh, with all this um, and, and the other quick thing I want to say was the you know Dr. Halsey being like trapped in like a, a hologram prison I thought was pretty cool that was like one of the good things or you know one of the interesting things um, about this episode was like Halsey's kind of story plot but yeah the, the ending was just not good other than the cool little action with the elite it was just not good to see Maki back yeah like, if I was going to close out this this show uh, this the, at least this video is that I think the 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 overall feeling of the show is better, but I just feel like they are stepping on. They're like taking a step forward and taking like ten steps back with some of these continued story plots that don't make sense or don't are not what we want. Like you know, if you take a poll, a straw poll, and say, "All right, everyone, which of the two worst story plots and characters that we can include?" The first one would probably be Quan, and the second one, Quan's arc, and the second one would be the inclusion of Maki. And Maki's arc. And with that being the case, how did you end the first episode with Quan? How did you end the second episode with Maki? <laughs> with Maki. So it's like, guys, well, so wh why are you doing this? Like, you know yeah. what people don't want. And it's like, you're pushing it. Like, you're just like saying, nah, it reminds me of like when the Spider-Man director was like, oh, you don't want Mary Jane? Well, screw you. I, I want Mary Jane in there. It's like, guys, like, your fans don't want something. Stop adding it or, or lessen it at least like don't don't make Quan a ending of the show character it should always be the spartans it should always be the elites or spartans not maki not Quan. like those are your worst characters and you're just like no let's close it out let's end it with them start ending on a bang like no no one's no one gives a crap about these characters so it just makes no sense to me so i was hoping that they were going to give us like a all right next week on halo and they didn't they yeah. just left a sour Maki gross yes. taste in my mouth and now I have to sit here and just hope that it's it's something that like looks good because you can't give me a Maki ending and then I just like am happy like I'm not I'm not excited for Maki's story to return um so that's just how I feel maybe I'm a Debbie Downer but I'm just I'm I don't want to see Maki anymore I thought her getting capped in the first season was was good enough for me and it feels like they said, hey, a lot of the plot lines are gone. Maki's on the table. That means Chief's pants might be off the table. Like, that's, that's, yeah. it could, it could happen. They're like yeah. wrapped around I his just, neck or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> dude, I like, when I saw her, I was like, she's going to get naked again. I could feel it. Like, yeah. like, her, her, hair, her. her hair is shorter. Like, oh my God. <laughs> it's, it could get that. They did say Arbor was going to be. I call I said I did say that last I said Maki would be the arbiter, bro. I said that already. Oh no. Oh god, don't say that. All right. Well, before we are, I'm gonna close this out just because if I say it anymore, I might lose more sleep. But if you what do you think about the first that two episodes of the Halo show? If you like them, let us know what you think were the best aspects in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. We will be doing reviews on every episode from even good ones to horrifying ones. So make sure you stay tuned and watch the rest of the reviews as they go up. Uh, we'll be having a playlist for those in the channel. 
uh, section. So until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.